Hello, and welcome to the respiratory system. At this point, you want to be an active participant and feel comfortable with all the terms of the respiratory system. Please pause the video and see if you can label the picture. I will resume in a moment. Welcome back. At this point, I'm going to bring the terms up for the respiratory system. These are the main terms that you should know in preparation for your upcoming test. At this point, if you would like now to fill in the parts of the terms are provided, please pause and label the diagram. All right. Let's go ahead and go through all the parts. If you've labeled the diagram, you may check your answers. If you've not made and labeled the diagram, please follow along. The whole purpose of the respiratory system is to bring outside air containing a high proportion of oxygen into your lungs. There it will meet the circulatory system and there will be a gas exchange between your lungs and the blood. The blood will take in the fresh oxygen and the blood will also deposit Excess carbon dioxide, which is produced as a waste product from your cells during metabolism. The carbon dioxide will then breathe out of the lungs and return to the atmosphere. This cycle will continue, and that process is called breathing. So let's go ahead and let's go through the order that, love, that air will enter your lungs and then be exchanged with your blood. Air may enter through one of two passageways. Air may enter through the nasal cavity, which I will call A, or through your oral cavity, which I will call B. So air may enter through either of these two passages, and there's two cavities of which they can be part of. These two cavities will meet in the back at this region here. This region I will call C is the pharynx. Below the pharynx, there is a small little flap. This small little flap, part D, is the epiglottis. The epiglottis is what determines which pathway objects or air will progress through. If the epiglottis allows for air to go through to the lungs, it will actually fold over and seal the path. Along for things to go down the esophagus, which is the pathway to the stomach for the digestive system. When someone chokes, what has occurred is the epiglottis is not closed fully over the air pathway, allowing for food or water to be lodged in the air pathway, thus causing choking. So the epiglottis is the gateway between going down toward your lungs or going down toward your stomach. As we progress down past the epiglottis, we will reach the back portion. I will denote this as E, the larynx. The larynx is what people commonly refer to as the voice box. When it's set in motion to vibrate, it will vibrate the air column around it, causing sound, and this is how we are able to talk. The larynx is covered by a very large portion of cartilage, people commonly call this the abdominal. Below the larynx is then a continuous tube surrounded by some cartilage. That is called the trachea. I will call that F. The trachea is what people commonly refer to as the windpipe. It is a singular long pathway that will extend all the way down until it reaches the region of your lungs. When it reaches that region, it branches into two very large branches. These two branches are called the bronchi. I'll call them G. The bronchi can go into either the left or right lung. The bronchi will further branch into smaller branches called bronchioles. The bronchioles are all these smaller pathways that the lungs will continuously branching in. If you would like to think of this, think of your lungs as an upside down tree, where the trachea is the trunk, so the teeth will make it easier to remember, the bronchi are the big branches, and the bronchioles are the smaller branches. Now in a tree, at the end of the smaller branches, you have leaves. In your lungs, at the end of these smaller bronchioles, you have another part, the alveoli. 
Yeah, I will add, are small air sacs. These air sacs are surrounded by capillaries. Capillaries are from your blood system. What will happen here is here is where the blood will deposit excess carbon dioxide that's been accumulated and it will take in fresh oxygen. It will then go to your heart and become part of your circulatory system. After your alveoli fill up with carbon dioxide, they will then use carbon dioxide and be breathed back out through this entire pathway. However, there are two other parts I would like to point out at this time. The alveoli and the bronchioles are all in these very large structures, which I am currently circling. These large structures are your lungs. I'll give them a start. So those are your lungs. Below your lungs is what drives this entire system. I will give it a smiley face because it's good. This is your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is a very large muscle, which is what causes the change in air pressure, which allows for fresh oxygen to come in and pushes excess carbon dioxide out. The diaphragm is what drives your breathing. It also separates your upper cavity of the body, called the thoracic cavity, from the lower cavity, called the abdominal cavity. Now, during the process of breathing, after the fresh air makes it all the way down to the alveoli, it gets exchanged with the capillaries and your blood, and then the carbon dioxide that gets replaced will now go back through the exact path. So from your alveoli, it will travel up through the bronchioles, back into the bronchi, up through the trachea, past your larynx, past the epiglottis, past the pharynx, and out either of your two cavities, depending on if you're breathing out of your mouth or out of your nose. This cycle repeats and repeats and repeats, and that is the process of breathing. And ladies and gentlemen, there is your respiratory system.